hello everyone. Hello. I wanted to start by asking if any of you have solar panels on your roof. Oh, good one. Does anyone know anyone with solar panels on their roof? Yes. <laughs> it's good. For anyone who didn't put their hands up, uh, it has been noted. Uh, the sustainability <laughs> police have now got you on their records. <laughs> no, just joking. I reckon within 10 years, it's going to be everyone here for sure. So tonight, I want to tell you about the science of solar electricity. But first up, I thought I'd tell you a little bit about how everyday electricity is made. And it's from a physics principle that's very old. It's been around for a very long time. Some would say from the very beginning. Because in the beginning, God said <laughs> that. <laughs> and then there was light. <laughs> But at the same time, God said, let there be light. She also said, let there be electric toothbrushes and power drills and <laughs> blenders and golf buggies and anything that moves due to electricity. You can learn about it with physics and maths and these two equations here. But I think the best way to learn about it is with our bodies. And that's what we're going to do. So there are going to be two types of people. There are going to be magnets and there are going to be coils. So you have to decide with the person sitting next to you or the two people sitting next to you uh, who's going to be a magnet and who's going to be a coil. So if there are three people, there are two magnets and one coil. Good? <clears throat> All right. So the, so the magnets need to put their arms up in the air like this. Magnets, yes, just like that. Fantastic. Perfect. And the coils need to put their arms like a big coil. Oh, yes. And then the magnets need to look towards the coils. And without punching them in the head, they need to move their magnets through the coils, yeah? And then they're going to bring them out, but as they bring them out, the coils need to go... <laughs> and look at electric it. We're going to do that three times really fast. Are you ready? Go in and out and electric it and out. <laughs> <Awesome>. <laughs> Give yourselves a round of applause. <clears throat> That's good. <clears throat> because what you guys just did was make some electro magnetism. True story. Fact of our universe, that when you get a magnet and you put it through a coil, <laughs> you make electricity flow through the coil. So this is just a kitchen magnet and a lame bit of uh, tin foil. But if you get a really strong magnet, like, uh, like this one here, made of neodymium, and move it through Lots and lots and lots of coil connected to a little light bulb. And you move the magnet through the coil. You can make electricity flow. It's, it's not super bright. <laughs> but this is a homemade job. If you do it smartly so that the magnets are turning inside the coils, you can make a mini generator. <laughs> and this is how we do it that we do it with really big magnets and really big coils. Does anyone know the biggest way we make electricity in Australia? It begins with a C. Coal. Coal, yeah, you're exactly right. Uh, I used to live in Newcastle, and there's a beach there, Burwood Beach, it's beautiful. Um, but in the cliffs, uh, there are coal seams still in the cliffs, and I, I got a bit of coal from them. And this much here is about how much the average Australian burns every day for their domestic electricity which I reckon is kind of not too bad, but for everyone here in this audience, for the whole year, it'd go a big way to filling a good part of this room. So what we do with this coal is we, um, <coughs> we get it, uh, we crush it into dust, and then we burn it. And I was going to do a demonstration about it, but the roof was um, a bit too low. So I'll show you a video I did <laughs> at my house. <laughs> I didn't know this was going to be on TEDx, but this is my backyard, filled by my partner. And so what we've got here is um, something which is related to coal, it's flour, uh, which is what would turn into coal if you buried it for a couple hundred million years. And burning it with just a gas torch that didn't want in here. And uh, burning the flour underneath a the flame. A T one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they didn't want me doing that here. <laughs> But that's what we're doing. Uh, so that's what we're doing every day. We're getting uh, coal dust, burning it underneath a big bucket of water in the sky. Uh, and that bucket of water is getting hot, turning into steam, which is going up. 
And as it goes up, it's turning magnets that are spinning inside coils that are connected to the lights in Sydney. I think not in this room. I think this room, this building is doing it pretty well. Um, but most of us are using a fair bit of coal electricity every day. That's coal. Um, but there are heaps of other ways to spin magnets inside coils. Uh, here are some of them. All different ways of using energy is using motion to turn magnets inside coils to generate electricity. This is how the world does it. Coal, gas, renewables, most of this is hydro with a bit of uh, wind. Nuclear, leaven, and oil, uh, petroleum. This is how Australia does it. We have a lot of coal, super cheap here. Uh, gas, renewables, most of this is hydro with a bit of wind as well. Um, but 99% of the world's electricity is made by spinning magnets inside coils. The other 1% and growing is what I work on. Uh, I reckon it's pretty cool. It is solar energy. Yeah, yeah, well, thanks. I don't know if I need a round of applause for that. Right. <laughs> so solar electricity is really cool. It's really different. It's the only way we generate electricity on Earth at scale without any moving parts. It uses the energy of sunlight to create electricity directly. At the heart of a solar cell is a little electric field. And it works a little bit like a pool table, where you have light or the white ball coming in, and if it's got enough energy, it'll scatter the charges or the pool balls to opposite ends of a solar cell or the pool table, where they can be collected to make electricity. In the middle of it is a little electric field that's made by a semiconductor with a positive region, we call that P-type region, and a negative region, we call that an N-type region. And usually when you get a positive charge and a negative charge, they want to attract. But the electric field at the interface between these two layers, it's called a PN junction, can split apart positive and negative charges using the energy of sunlight to create electricity. Incredible invention, amazing devices when they are uh, all put together, they look a little bit like this one, or uh, this one, it's a bendy one that my colleagues at CSIRO make, or this little solar-powered car, a solar-powered turtle. I thought I'd just show you how it works, it's pretty cool. I'll give me a bit of space. Oh, no. <laughs> a little turtle. <laughs> I guess we'd call it. <laughs> uh, that, yeah, maybe the turtle needs a round of applause, <laughs> not me. <laughs> so these solar panels are about uh, five to ten percent efficient. Uh, the ones you see on rooftops are about fifteen to twenty percent efficient. Uh, but we'd like to make solar panels even more efficient, and there are heaps of different ideas out there. Uh, one idea that I work on is something called plasmons, and the best analogy I found for plasmons was a Buddhist singing bowl. So in the mountains of Nepal and Tibet, there are Buddhist monks that use as an aid to meditation Buddhist singing bowls. Now, Buddhist singing bowls are all about resonance. So if I drive the bowl in just the right way, I can induce a large response. So this is a mechanical resonance, a mechanical response. But the same thing happens with light. The structure is about 100,000 times smaller. And that's what my research is all about, using structures like this to concentrate light to increase the efficiency of solar cells. So for my PhD, I made whole fields of these singing bowls on the nanoscale and coated them with solar cell materials. Um, there were organic solar cells that we were working with. Um, we were using plasmons, organic, plasmon, organic plasmonic solar cells. Um, they took a bit of time to start working, and when they worked, we like to refer to them as orgasmonic solar cells. <laughs> and this is what we found. <laughs> On the left-hand side, we have the efficiency. On the bottom, we have the color of light, the wavelength of light. Uh, this is what the efficiency was for a flat solar cell, and this is what it was for the plasmon solar cell. There's heaps more, about four times more electricity than what we started with. Uh, we started with electricity that was pretty low, uh, less than 1% efficient, uh, but we learned some cool physics about where light goes in these structures, how to make light go where we want it to go with nanostructures. Uh, so that was for my PhD, published a whole bunch of, of papers, which is what you're supposed to do in academia. 
Uh, and then I came back to Australia. Uh, that was in England, came back to Australia to do postdoctoral research where I'm working on the other end of the spectrum, but super high efficiency solar cells. And one of the ideas is a tandem solar cell where the aim is to get the standard silicon solar cell you get on your roof and put on top of it another solar cell uh, of a material called perovskite that's better able to absorb the blue, green and UV light we get from the sun and let through the red, orange and yellow light to the silicon solar cell underneath. Turns out to be super important in these devices to make light go where we want it to go. Uh, so that's blue light up top and red light down the bottom. And one of the structures we found we can do that with are similar to the structures that are found on the wings of blue butterflies, morpho butterflies like this one. So these butterflies are super blue and it's not from a pigment in their wings, it's from, because their wings are made of just like kind of grey material, um, it's from the tiny thousands, millions of tiny nanostructures on the wing's surface uh, that when they interfere with light, they resonate with light, uh, they do it in just the way to resonate blue light and scatter it in all different directions. So what we're doing in the lab is using these structures as our inspiration uh, to replicate them on the nanoscale, replicate these nanostructures, and we're finding that we can use these structures to make light go where we want it to go. So with these technologies, we're aiming for efficiencies double what we're currently getting on rooftops, uh, which would be great. Uh, but it shouldn't prevent you from getting solar panels if you're thinking about it. <laughs> Uh, the physics from this, if it ever makes it to commercialization, in honesty, uh, would take 10 years, I reckon, uh, if it ever got there. But I found out something cool the other day, which is that this year is the 30th anniversary of the world's first 20% efficient silicon solar cell. And it was made right here in Sydney by my old supervisor, Professor Andrew Blakers, and his supervisor, Professor Martin Green, just down the road. And that was in the 80s. Uh, at a time when solar cells were largely a fringe technology for hippies and the solar and the space industry. But things have changed massively since then. Solar electricity now is 10 times cheaper than it was 10 years ago, in real terms, 100 times cheaper than it was 40 years ago. And that trend is continuing to decrease. In Australia right now, at time of use, solar electricity is cheaper than retail electricity across the country. And it's something that's been noticed. One in seven Australian homes have solar panels on them. I think maybe, I don't know how, how it works with this audience. Uh, one in seven Australian homes have solar panels on them. That's the highest rate of uptake of any country in the world, in the planet. And it's just the start. Businesses are starting to work out that sunshine hours are a good fit uh, with business hours and with the technologies of batteries and electric vehicles and off-river pumped hydro energy storage. The tipping point is just around the corner. This year, two cold fire power plants were shut down in Australia in the last year. And the, it's very likely that we'll never see another coal fire power plant built in Australia ever again. And there are heaps of other people working out there. There are heaps of other ideas out there, heaps of other researchers, hundreds across Australia, hundreds across the world, uh, working to make solar electricity and renewable electricity uh, more efficient, more cost effective. It's a future that I think we're all excited to be a part of. Uh, I'm very excited to be able to share a bit of it with you tonight. Um, who knows, perhaps in 30 years from now, the physics of blue butterfly wings will be helping to power the planet. Thank you. Uh, Nijla, ladies and gentlemen, that's fantastic. Yay! Thank you. Thank you. OK. Who was a magnet and who was a coil? Hands up the magnets. <laughs> I didn't get to see it properly. Who was the coil? How much fun was that? You, you felt a bit well. naughty, you didn't did it? Well, yeah. Okay, uh, so that was amazing. That was fantastic. Um, uh, you, you're doing, you, you had some pretty cool news to tell me earlier. What was that? Something pretty amazing. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm going to become a dad in a couple of weeks anytime now, yeah. yeah thanks. <laughs> yeah, it's more for my partner, really, even though, yeah. But. I was going to make a joke about the other name that you give uh, the, the research. Um, there was Orgasma. Yeah, I'll stop. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nine months ago. No. Nine months ago. Um, absolutely <laughs> amazing. So, so ten. ten <laughs> you said it, not me, but I promise yeah. you, because I'm evil. So, ten years before we get to see this uh, in, in manufacturing, but basically the point is, is that we should all be doing this now. If we can do solar yeah, yeah, yeah. energy, solar cells, we should be doing it. 
Yeah, if you can do it. Uh, if, you, if you've got a place, if you've got a roof, not everyone has a roof. I don't, like I'm renting my place, so I don't have solar panels on my roof. I live um, in an apartment. That's yeah, it's problem. tricky, right? Yeah. But there are some cool stuff happening, solar share, uh, solar farms where you can buy in. Uh, I think, I, I got an Uber here tonight, um, just from, just down the road, and there's people working on apps like Uber for solar, where people will have solar electricity and they're generating it, and then they'll be able to sell it to their neighbour or... Whatever, and you just say, I want it to go to my grandma or whatever if I'm not using it during the day. I think it's like, the future's here. It's, it's, the future's it's, it's here. on its way. Yeah, it's fantastic. Sure. Ladies and gentlemen, Nitch Lal. Amazing. Thank okay. you. Good on you. <laughs>